Hey, this is Jake with Associate PI. Today we are breaking down the CPCU 500 exam difficulty. This is part three of our eight part CPCU 500 video series. If you haven't checked out the other two videos, I recommend you go back and check them out. This is presented by AssociatePI.com. We are an independent company, independent and not affiliated with the institutes or the CPCU designation. We are all individuals that have earned our CPCU designation and passed our CPCU 500 exam. So I'm here today to help you prepare and get ready for the exam because it's a tough one. All right, so let's get started. As I mentioned, this is video number three um, in our eight part series. You can go back and check out the CPCU 500 exam review and exam format videos. And you can see all videos at associatepi.com slash videos. Uh, so as we touched on in our last video, uh, this is the second most failed exam. It has a pass rate of 70%, meaning that three out of every 10 people will fail this exam. It's a tough one, and um, we're going to get into that why why it's so difficult in this video. And if you want to check out all the pass rates for all CPCU exams, you can visit us at associatepi.com slash CPCU pass rates. Uh, so here it is. It's difficult, not really because of the concepts, the content, but because of the question format. So this is usually the first exam that everybody takes on their journey to earning the CPCU designation. And the questions are very tricky. The format is tough. It requires you to understand the concepts, all the minor details of the concepts, and requires you to apply that knowledge to real life scenarios. It's tough. It's different than exams that you are probably used to. So that is why this exam is so difficult. So some good news and bad news. Good news, the content is not overly difficult. I think you'll have no trouble understanding the content, but applying that knowledge, getting used to this type of question format, uh, getting used to the CPCU exams and how they phrase their questions is pretty tricky. So this first exam gives a lot of people trouble, which is why it's the second most failed exam. Um, so here's kind of what I was saying, the format, you can't simply memorize the definitions and memorize the concepts and expect to pass the exam. You have to actually apply the knowledge. So you have to read the concepts, understand them. And just like you do in your day job, just like you do in your job, you have to apply the knowledge to a real life scenario. Um, so you've got to understand the topics and be able to apply it. You can't just repeat the definition and expect to pass the exam. But the good news, if you have experience in the insurance industry, You'll have no trouble with the topics of this exam. They're all things that we've seen before. They're all things that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, all things like risk control, risk financing, insurance, deductibles. Um, you're gonna understand all the topics, no trouble, if you've had a couple of years experience. And if you don't have experience, you'll pick it up pretty quickly because you're smart. Uh, so here's an example of what I'm talking about. How the exam uh, requires you to uh, analyze a scenario, read a real life scenario, and it really puts you in the shoes of a risk management professional. This exam is primarily based on risk management concepts. Um, so here's an example of the minor details I have to pay attention to and how you might have to analyze a real life scenario. Uh, so it says XYZ company is insured using a large deductible plan that includes a $150,000 deductible. In the event that XYZ company experiences a $75,000 covered loss, who will pay? Who will initially pay for the loss? So you can see this is a real life scenario. It's tough. It doesn't really ask you. It's not asking you to repeat a definition. It's not asking you to give some concept. You have to read the case, understand it, take in the case facts, and answer the question. So in this case, the answer is the insurer. And you can read the definition here about a, a large deductible plan. It's an insurance policy with a per accident deductible of $100,000 or more. The minor detail they have to know, though, to answer this question properly, is that under a large deductible plan, the insurer pays for losses up front. So the insurer initially pays for the claim. So as, see the question here. It says, who will initially pay for the loss? So the answer is the insurance company. They will initially pay for the plan under a large deductible plan. Um, so if the loss amount is below the deductible, the insurer will seek reimbursement, reimbursement from the insured. So in this case, the insurance company pays up front, then seeks reimbursement from the insured. So in the end, the insured pays a $75,000 covered loss, but the insurance company pays it up front. So it's a tricky question. You've really got to pay attention to the facts, kind of take it all in, take your time to select the right answer because this is how tricky the questions can be. Pay attention to those minor, in, minor details that the insurance company pays first, then the insured reimburses the insurance company. So here's the good news. I've stressed you out a bit. I've told you it's the second most failed exam. I've told you that it's difficult. I've warned you about the question format, but it's not that difficult and you're going to be fine. Like I said, the content is 
pretty straightforward. The concepts are pretty straightforward. The questions, on the other hand, worded, tricky. Uh, strangely, it's not going to be like your typical high school or college exam that you've taken in the past. That's the bad news. The good news, you're going to be okay with the content. You're going to be just fine soaking it all in, especially if you have experience in the insurance, insurance industry. If you have experience, you're going to recognize all of these topics. So there's the good news. Don't stress. You're going to pass. Here's a couple of tips, just things that we've found that have worked for us and have worked for our students on how to pass this exam. Um, first big thing, fully read the course. I can't tell you how many times people have failed this exam came to me and said, I didn't read the full course. You have to read it. You have to know everything that's going to be on the exam. You can't skim through it, read through it, and pay attention to the minor details. The best way to do that, tip number two, take notes. It's, you know, nobody enjoys taking notes. Nobody enjoys studying but you have to do it. It really makes sure that you retain the content. It, it ensures that you write down the minor details. Uh, so to just use shorthand, what I do is I used to create study guides and I write down um, just bullet points, main topic, bullet points, what are the minor details? And that's something we actually put in our courses now is that we force you to take notes on the most important topics. Very important, take notes. And third, possibly the most important is to practice. The question format, as I've mentioned in this video and the prior videos, is tricky. They're going to try and trick you. They're not like question formats. They're not like questions that you see on your high school and college exams that you've taken in the past. Um, it's unlike any exam questions that I've taken before. So I was really surprised when I took my first CPCU exam. Your first exam is going to be tough. So take as many practice quizzes, quizzes and exams as you can. Uh, really familiar, familiarize yourself with the question format and um, understand what topics you need to study and restudy. So practice as much as possible. And if you want to do so, I recommend you download our free practice exam over at associatepi.com slash practice exam, completely free. Uh, we'll give you a study guide for free and a practice exam for free to get used to understanding um, the question format of the CPC 500 exam and what important topics to focus on when you're studying for your CPC 500. So head over there, download your practice exam. It's well worth it to get used to the uh, question format that you will see on this exam. That's it for this video. If you need more resources for the CPCU 500, you can check out associatepi.com slash CPCU 500. We'll break down more uh, about the difficulty of the exam, exam question examples, format examples, what to expect, um, anything you need to know about the 500 exam. And if you want to check out more videos, check out associatepi.com slash videos. Again, this is video number three of an eight-part video series, so go ahead check out the next video where we are breaking down a sample exam question, both from part A and part B of the exam. Um, and you can check out our previous videos about the exam review and exam format. So that's it. Good luck on the exam. Hope to see you on the next video.